Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 41 of my modded Factoria playthrough. In this episode, we are going to start growing Benefran, and then we need to start planning to wash coal, which is going to generate a whole bunch of sulfur that we can use for lots of stuff. So how did these seeds work out? Well, we've got some seeds in here. And it looks like the machine stopped, kind of like I, I thought it would, where it stopped with some seeds left over in the machine, and it was just... Uh, irony that it ran out with our very last garden <laughs> uh, unfortunately this logic kind of worked as intended but it wasn't really necessary you see we take those out it told it to be green and now it told it to be red again and it, now it's just going to empty the rest of those because of how it works but well we can put all the plant life samples in here to eventually get used oops Probably would have had more chances, I guess. I just didn't think we were going to get that many plant life samples from gathering seeds. But we do have the Benefran seeds, and they're the more common ones. So let's put another chest here. And put the rarer seed in there. So now if we uh, seed one of these machines, it should start running. There it goes. And now it should, uh, through the output, generate more seeds, which will fill up the rest of these machines. We need to update the arm here. And there it goes. there. Now we need to bypass this wood. So now we're going to send Benefram in there. Okay, sun's going down. Let's check to see if hydrogen is working like it should. Okay, it's basically full. This thing is running quite strongly. Yep, it's absolutely working its way through the hydrogen. When you have uh, batteries, you can more easily make this work all the time. And the Benefram got sent on its way. And not a moment too soon, because it just ran out of compost. And there it goes. That'll be a fairly large improvement in efficiency. About 50% for wood. But there's some other considerations too. Namely that we don't really have any buffer of wood. The only buffer we have is this long belt basically but it would be nice for even if the, in the daytime even if we don't need any electricity from wood or coal that we're still producing some so to create a buffer for energy we need to figure out how much energy we actually need to cover the night well if we look here at our network Basically, we're running at 72 megawatts. Uh, we're getting a little bit extra from the fluid burning generator, but let's just round it out and say it's about 72 megawatts. Well, the fuel capacity is in megajoules. So, just to quickly explain how electricity works, a megawatt is just energy over a period of time. So if we're generating 50 megawatts, that's five times as much electricity as 10 megawatts. Well, a megajoule is like a capacity for how long that energy can be output. So luckily the math works out pretty well that it's one watt in one second uses one joule of energy. So 72 megawatts of power requires 72 megajoules of energy per second. So, it's quite a few pieces of charcoal, basically. 
let's do the math here and figure out exactly how much energy we need. The nights are 15 minutes long uh, by design. I designed it to be exactly that length, and this makes this math a little easier. So the nights are 4.321 times longer than the standard stop game, and Clockwork Mod let me adjust that specifically. So how many megajoules do we need in a minute for 72 megawatts? Well, just times 60 is 4,320. And then our nights are exactly 15 minutes long. The dawn and dusk is included in that. So it's exactly 50-50. So the amount of time that the sun is up is going to be 50% of the time. So we don't need to worry about dawn and dusk and all that. So 4,320 times 15 is 64,800. So that's how many megajoules we need to store for the next night. Well, since each piece of fuel that we're going to be storing is six megajoules, we just divide that number by six, which gives us 10,800. So in other words, if our factory is running at full blast and we're powering it with charcoal, we'll need 10,800 pieces of charcoal to power the factory. Lighters. Looks like they're trying to get in, but they didn't damage anything. Uh, let's just put it right there. And then an in and an out. And we'll do a quick circuit network right here. To say the enabled condition is charcoal is less than 10,800. So right now it's just going to go straight through because we can't produce charcoal as quickly as we need it to power the factory. So it's going to have to inject some carbon in there. However, during the daytime, once we got all these solar panels out, we're going to be consuming no electricity from fuel, either coal-based or wood-based. So the wood will be able to continue being processed since we went through all the effort of building these farms, and they consume pollution, which is nice. And it's just going to keep filling this thing up. Will it ever get to 10,800? Well, we'll have to check uh, at the beginning of the next day, I suppose, to see. Although we're not completely powered by solar panels yet, so it won't be an accurate test. I don't think that it will, but that's okay. We just, we don't want this to completely full of needless charcoal. Like, if we don't need it in there, why bother filling it up? Like, it's just needless processing. So adding that in there helps it stay at a reasonable number. Since we're getting close to the end of the night, how are we doing on that hydrogen? Did it make it through? Almost. Didn't quite make it through all of the hydrogen, but at the next night, we'll be able to clear it out and it will be balanced at around 4,000. Looks like we are not producing sand fast enough. Darn. I was hoping we could just patch in there, but it looks like we're only getting half of what we need. And we'll just have to calculate it out. Yeah, 1.8 machines. So it's one to one to one, and then we had, need to have uh, two machines on the end. Let's make the sand up above here. Get hooked up. Let's see if this works. Now it's going to be producing mud. We're going to have to deliver back down, but for now, let's see if the sand works. Oh yes, that is much more. That should work all right. Now, where to send the mud? The easy way is probably down this way. <laughs> well, this is gonna be a little stupid looking, but okay. <laughs> it's connected. There really needs to be a, a big old warehouse or something right there, but this will work for now. There we go. Well, it's running at full blast, but these machines aren't. Should be, though. I mean, all these are basically green still, which looks good. Oh, and I guess these wouldn't run at full blast anymore because of the upgraded machines. Well, we'll just have to play it by ear and see how it runs over the long term. If not, we can expand this if necessary. So how is the charcoal doing? Filling up. 
4.2k. So it's not going to quite get there, but that'll cover most of the night. So how are we doing solar panels here? It looks like they're all caught up. Well, time to build the rest of them. And finally, the last panel. And the last pattern is finally down. And our math is good because we have no more panels left. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, 72 megawatts worth. Let's see, now our factory is entirely supplied by solar panels. Hmm, so looking at our tree output, it's mostly full, but not always. Some of these are losing resources. Which leads me to believe we're not quite producing it fast enough, at least the compost. Let's make an additional uh, two farms. Let's see how that works. Fortunately, we're going to have to kind of move things around a bit here. Okay, that's extended. We'll have to see how that works out. Looks like we're doing pretty good so far. They're up to 9.5k of charcoal here right before the sun's going to go down and when it's going to need to start using it. So that's pretty well timed. Hmm. I'm looking at the wood belt. And it looks like it's running at full speed, but these machines are not running at full speed. So a lot of this probably needs to be updated. Okay, that should run a little faster. And there's an example of how this does this just doesn't need to run anymore because this is completely full. Which is good. It means we're not producing needless amounts of wood. So what about all this carbon here? It's kind of just sitting here not getting used. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> but there's better ways of making carbon. Specifically coal processing too. So first it unlocks a different way of making carbon monoxide where you just add purified water and carbon and you get carbon monoxide. Whether that's better than the carbon dioxide through gas shift is debatable. It just kind of depends on your situation. I'm not sure where they bury that. So whether or not you want to use that depends on the situation. However, whenever you see that two above things, it usually means it's a newer, more efficient way of doing something. So the previous method, we would take our crushed coal and cook it in a furnace to get coke. However, now, if we add purified water, we could wash it in a liquefier and get sulfuric wastewater out. So it's actually more efficient from an energy standpoint. However, it also has something else. By producing sulfuric wastewater, it becomes a sulfur generator. And you could make so much sulfur doing this if you're burning lots of coal. So this is a great way of getting sulfur. However, you don't want to just delete what you're doing now. So you don't want to just delete this stuff behind the screen here and do that because what happens if you run out of space for sulfur? Well, then you can't make fuel anymore. So you want to have multiple ways of producing products based on the conditions in the factory that might change the way you might want to do things. However, this will generate uh, lots of uh, sulfur. Not that we need that much, but we can use it. We can dump the sulfur to mine uh, sapphirite in our faraway mine. So we'll let that process. Actually, it looks like it'll be very quick. There it is. So since we're going to be producing sulfur, we need some ways of getting rid of it. Well, for one, we want to be able to create sulfur dioxide gas. Right now, it's a byproduct that we get from lead, but now we can take sulfur and just create it whenever we need it. In addition, we can get sulfur dioxide synthesis from calcium sulfate, which the calcium is also a byproduct of our uh, making of phosphorus. And we could turn that into lime and get the some sulfur dioxide gas back. So that's pretty efficient. In addition to that, we also have a way of making phosphoric acid directly from phosphorus, because right now we're using sulfuric acid first, so that's something we can also do. But for now, let's get this sulfur processing done so it'll be ready when we need it. 
So let's see what kind of ratio we need for this kind of output. It looks like we have eight liquefiers. So let's try to create a setup that also uses eight liquefiers. So we want to make carbon the normal way. And there's our eight liquefiers producing 18 per second. And then we want to make coke for newer, better way through also liquefiers. Looks like twice as many, so that's convenient for ratios. And then we need to make crushed coal from regular coal in three crushers. So that's also convenient. How nice. <laughs> in fact, this is the perfect minimum ratio uh, necessary for this. Okay. Well, the steam... Let's see. is created through a boiler. A boiler which we have set to use coal. So we have it linked, and we still need the same three because nothing has really changed about that. But also we're going to need uh, purified water to wash this carbon from. So we'll do water purification, which we need. Technically, it says three plants, but here's the thing. We have a byproduct of sulfuric wastewater. So... If we clean that sulfuric wastewater, we'll get sulfur and then some mineralized water and some purified water back. So we basically 100 goes in and we can get 70 back out as purified water. So we definitely want to do that to make it more efficient. You see it produces 210. And um, it looks like the... Let's see if the order matters here. It does. So see right here, if we have it ordered this way, where water purification is first, it uses three hydro plants. And then sulfuric wastewater is second, and it uses three hydro plants. And it's like, that's not really accurate, because it says we have an output of purified water, which we don't want. So if we move these and have the purification happens first, so it purifies all available water, then it's only what's left over that we need, which is the 90 units, which is done by this final plant. So we need 0.9 of the final plant. And it leaves us with a small amount of byproducts. Mineralized water, which we're going to need something to do with, which we can get into that. And the saline water. Well, the saline water, since it's a low value thing, we can just send it in the clarifier. And we don't need much of that. And then it's gone. However, the mineralized water is something we're going to need to deal with. But we'll worry about that. Uh, actually, we can do the research for that now since it's relevant to all of this. But this is the setup. Actually, we've already got the necessary research uh, completed for mineralized water. Basically, the dump for it is turning it into green algae in algae farms. It requires carbon dioxide, which we do have an access of, but that'll be somewhere to put that. And then mineralized water. So definitely right off the bat, if you can make carbon dioxide an efficient way, like using wood, uh, that'll make this even more uh, free. But basically you create green algae, and then you can turn that algae into cellulose fiber. And then that cellulose fiber is what turns into wood pellets, which can then be turned into charcoal. However, you can also turn it into carbon dioxide again and feed back into the process to make it more efficient. We don't have any other um, research ready. You can turn it into methanol gas, which is used for plastic, but I don't think I have all the research ready for that yet. So we basically have two options with the green algae. We can turn it into fuel and turn it into carbon dioxide. Both of those things lower our dependence on coal, which we're already down to 50% of the coal vein. So that is definitely something worthwhile of doing. But it's nice to know we have the research for it. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to build our coal washing setup and then start planning on what we're going to do with all that sulfur. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.